What's going on guys, it's Jose with Jay's Mobile Auto Glass. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to cold knife a windshield out and what techniques to use when cold knifing. Uh, here I have laid in front of you uh, the different blade size and two tools that we currently use. The quick release tool and one of the equalizers, I guess you just call them a, I really don't know what, you, what the right word for this is. Um, but this tool, actually I've been trying to learn it a lot better and I'm starting to like this one a lot more because you can put a lot more pressure on it. But we'll talk about the pluses and minuses of each, both of these tools, why this tool can be better at times and why this tool can be better at times as well. Also the knives, again, you, you're, you come with different, um, with different sizes of blades, guys. So you got really, it just depends. They, when you look them up, they'll sell them depending on the size, but you typically always want one of these, really, oh, what is it, I think an inch, inch and a half maybe, um, just to finish off the corners in case they're deep or any areas that might, they where they shot too close to the inner side of the pinch weld. Uh, typically you won't use anything more than a, uh, tip, there's, one, there's one blade that's I'm missing, guys, that's in between these two, that's in between this and this, that's a little bit longer. I think it's three quarters per, perhaps. Um, but that's the blade that I use mostly. Um, very, very quickly, it's very important for me to show you guys that it is important to keep your blades sharp. This is a new blade and this is a used one we've been using. Um, I very rarely will go through the blades just because I always try and keep them sharp, but this one's actually a little dull. You can tell, you can tell the difference guys of how, what, how they feel. So it's always important to keep your blades sharp. Um, if not, you're gonna struggle with that as well. A lot of the, um, the process of cold knifing, a uh, cold knifing a windshield is not your, how strong you are, it's how uh, sharp your blade is. It's very important, guys. The sharpness, your blade and your cold knife will be doing the work, not you physically. If you're doing a lot of that work, it's because either the job's just really a, a tough and tight job, or uh, your blade's really dull. As soon as you sharpen it, you'll be able to tell the difference. So again, your tool should be doing most of the work and not you physically. Um, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get you guys a kind of like a rough idea of how to cold knife. Uh, before we get started, before I get those comments of why, this is uh, my personal vehicle. We'll be doing the windshield replacement on. I'm putting a new glass in it. Um, 96 through the Silica GT4. So just a little something there so you guys know this is actually my personal vehicle. And we will be putting a new windshield in it just because it does have the original Toyota windshield in it. And I want to put in a, a, another, I think I'm putting in a Fuyo with a 50% tin on it. Uh, real quickly, I'll show how these tools work as well too, before I show you some techniques. The quick release, you just kind of pull the lever, put the blade in here, and then you're good to go in there. You kind of release it. That's why it's called the quick release or whatever. And you're good to go there. That's how that one works. Now, when it comes to this tool, this tool kind of confused me a little bit. But this one actually is a lot, it's pretty easy. Put it in there and then you pull it out. It has three different, um, it, has, it has a little ball a bearing that presses and locks it in place. But it's pretty nice to have as well. The only bad thing is when you pull it, when you try to go up from height, it can, um, it can mess up a little bit. Um, what's gonna go from there? Talked about the height blades, how these tools work. Oh yeah, this tool has a little bit of an extra, um, has an angle preferably for when you cut you, you typically want that angle right there so that way you don't cut well I like about this tool it has so much rubber on it and plastic on the ends so it makes it hard to um, really damage a customer's vehicle you still want to be careful because you can scratch the clear coat and then they have to get it all waxed and buff but this tool does offer a little bit more protection than this tool this tool does not really have much protection here you have the same angle but this is metal. If this were to scratch, you'd scratch the paint right off the car, clear off the car, and then you owe someone the paint job, or you're gonna have to prime it and use overlay 18, um, which will look kind of funny, and your customer will kind of wonder, unless they just don't pay attention to it. But again, we try to do as minimal damage as we can. Uh, the reason for blades also, why different size blades is, you typically can't cut a windshield, a whole windshield out with this. Sometimes you can get lucky, and use the longest blade and then you have an easy one. But the, the shorter you start to cut, the easier it will be. So for example, if I start with this blade and then I just go on and then I just go to the next size up there, then go to the next size up third and finish it off with that. But again, that is really time consuming as well. So you wanna kinda of get a blade that you feel very comfortable with. This one and then the three quarter are typically the two blades you can use to always use. Um, if my three quarter is getting stuck too much, I will down, I will downsize to this one. I'm not sure if this is half inch or really, I don't, even, I don't really know if this is an inch. I, I really don't know. I have to look at the boxes. So my measurements could be off guys, but um, it's important not to just start with the biggest, longest blade. You will get stuck in the urethane and then you will have, you will struggle to uh, push through or pull through the urethane. Um, so typically you want to start, uh, we're going to start with this one with this size blade, see how we do. 
and then uh, we'll go from there. I'm gonna do half the windshield using the quick release one and then the other half using the pipe one just so you guys get an idea of how, how these two tools are different, okay? Um, that being said, I'm gonna show you guys, like, try to explain it to you how this works by using this glass right here. So when you're cold knifing a, a windshield, guys, you typically, I'm gonna try and do it from the side, you typically you want the blade literally up, up on that glass and you kind of want to angle it back a little bit, which depending if you're behind the cold knife, you want to angle it toward you like that. And then you want to cut, you want to cut like that. That's how you want to cut. You don't ever want to cut in between the urethane because you will get stuck in between the urethane. You cannot cut through the urethane like that. You want something like this to get a nice clean cut. You can sometimes go straight, depending how weak the bond is there, but you always kind of want to cut like at an angle like that. The, the more angle you can get like that, you don't want to angle too much because then you'll go through the glass. So you want to angle it just right. You'll be able to feel if you're angling too much, it'll tell you to. You have to just listen as well and feel it. Another reason why kind of wearing gloves, you have to be careful because you want to, the feeling is very important. So again, I'm just showing you guys how, how you guys want to cut, get that cut with that urethane. Just an example there. We're using this messed up uh, uh, middle piece glass off of a uh, 2017 F-150, the floater style. Let's go ahead and do half the windshield. Show you guys how I do it. We're gonna start with the, we're gonna start with the old, under brand new blade, just so we don't struggle with on this video. Now, because this side, this 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 is telling you that this has to be toward the vehicle because there's it prevent it has uh, was clearance, so you don't have to worry about it. You want this a little, I guess, the little nut, whatever, or the. I can't think of the words, sorry guys, early in the morning. But anyways, you want this portion toward the, uh, or the cable, toward the windshield portion of it. Oh, my bad. And of course, you're, so you're gonna end up like that. You're gonna lock it in. Typically, I'll, I'll kind of line up the first ball and this there together. Give me just a good little bit of a height. Now comes the part that's important. You're gonna wanna get right in between that glass right there. I'm gonna try and get as close as I can right there and kind of just, you can use the you can use the interior body here, guys, to help you pu let push it into the underneath the glass. Just because this is not an exposed area, it's not meant to be exposed. It's it's part of the pinch wheel, so you can um, use that. If this portion was exposed, I would not use that at all. I would have to just forcefully push it like that. But sometimes just having that little bit of leverage it does help. Um, just make sure you guys don't go crazy on it. So now we are. In between the urethane and the glass, that's the most important part. You have to be in between the urethane and the glass. Now, I'm gonna try and do it from one side, guys. And I will show you guys with one hand if you can just push straight. This is just pushing straight, guys. I don't know if you guys can see. This is pushing straight and, I, and I'm having trouble. This is me leveraging back a little bit more. You're still gonna be leveraging back. I'm trying to just show you guys how I'm, like with, with one hand, how, it, how it's gonna look before we go from there. Now, this is, now we're gonna actually do the, the, the job here. Now we're gonna go back. We're gonna see if we can do this angle. Oh, you know what's funny? I, I was actually right on the clip. That's funny. So maybe we can actually move from here. This is one hand going there. I'm gonna use one hand just to kind of lead me back a little bit. And then look, I'm not even using the cable. I'm literally just uh, using the angle, me going back a little bit. Kind of by back, I'm going this way. So now if you go back too much, you will hear a pop. That means you kind of, you did bad there. So we're gonna go back a little bit. See, a little bit too. I'm gonna go up a little bit and we're going there. The cable's nice for when you pull. Same thing, if you're on this side, you're gonna wanna pull, angle it this time opposite of you. You want that, you want that kind of angle on it. Now you're gonna pull, you're gonna pull, pull. You're angling it, angling it. When you get to this corner, guys, go slow. Especially if it has 90 degree angles, do be very careful with it. Um, you don't wanna accidentally fly and hit the edge of it. So what I'll do is I'll actually go with two hands and I'll kind of wiggle myself. I kind of wiggle it around that, if it has a 90 degree angle. Luckily, this is a curved edge, so you'll just be able to kind of just uh, pull it right around, but still be careful. You don't want to over pull, you need to scratch, you leave a Nike sign, a just do it sign there, and uh, that's not good. Again, you use your body weight, don't use your, um, you don't have to pull, you don't. You shouldn't have to use um, force, you shouldn't have to be having a workout here. You just, you should be able to use your body weight, see, body weight. Now as we get, as we get closer down, this is starting to dip into it more. So what I'm going to do is, with the quick release, 
I'm gonna raise the blade up about half right there. Now I have the clearance when I go down here, just to be safe that I won't scratch this, uh, this side pillar here. So same thing there. We're probably gonna have to scratch, this is a short car. There we go. There we go. Very easy guys. Now we're gonna finish off that little bit of the corner because we are gonna express to the bottom. Once you get down to right here, guys, you're gonna have to kind of just let yourself know when to stop because if you go too far, you can hit this fender and you do not want a fender, just cut it. And then when I'm kind of done here, I'll kind of just, you should be loose. We're gonna go back just to kind of touch it up a little bit, make sure we're through. Halfway right there, pull it back. Now when we're done, we're gonna kind of pull, angle it out and we're good. Nice, easy, cold knife. We're gonna sit here. Again, I set this cardboard because I still didn't want comments. Okay, now, you guys look, we actually got a nice clean cut. If we were still stuck, we would, we would finish it off with this long blade. We would raise it up, raise it up, kind of get it in here. And then we'd be able just to finish it all up like that. Just finish it off. Of course, with the cold knife, not with your hand. Don't use your hand. I'm just using it as an example, so. That's how you would finish it off with that one. Now, we're gonna use the other one. The other cold knife blade. We'll call this, uh, there's a specific name for this, but a lot of times, we we'll just call it like a pipe cold knife version of it, so. All right. This has the same premise. Now, we're not gonna cheat and start where we finished off the cut. We're gonna start a new cut here, and by continue the cut, is pretty much kind of in the way cheating just because it's already kind of you already found where uh, the opening is so it makes the cold knife a lot easier or at least the process is a lot easier what i like about this tool guys it has its plus it has its positives and negatives on it is um i'll show you guys in a second because it's hard to kind of speak about it you you don't have as much um area to go down on this you'll, you'll get stuck right here that's where you have to kind of swap it out finish it off there you're going to be constantly going up and down with it but there is a cool little trick you can do with this too and i'll show you guys in a second same process as before because this one has a little bit of the pinch weld here that i can kind of use as leverage we're going to kind of there we go now we're in now for this one you have to be careful when go angling it up because you can pull it out the ball joint does lock a little bit but we're going to put this bar portion toward us I'm gonna go as low as I can go. There we go. Now this one allows you to put a lot more force into it, a lot more of a, your body weight than the, the cable can. I'm gonna lean this back a little bit. The reason is this cable isn't stiff. This cable is meant to give you more kind of like an angle, kind of gets you more more freely on this one. This is more straight, straight left and right kind of idea of it, which is cool too. Um, like I said, it's a lot easier when you have tough ones. So then we're just gonna push. Same thing, this one's easier to see the angle on it. I'm kind of pulling back a little bit. So we're gonna go back a little bit. There's that clip. There's that clip. So we're gonna angle back. I'm, I'm just literally just putting my body weight on it, see? Same thing, angling it backwards. Now we're gonna keep going. I'll show you guys what I mean. We're actually gonna go from this side. There we go. Now, since I already know I'm gonna get stuck there, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that right out, swap it around. If I swap it around, go this way. Now we're gonna go that. I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up just one and just kind of push it down. And there we go, there we go, there we go. The cool thing about this, that if I was to get done, and if you guys can see, I'll hit it right there, but this is all rubber and it's protected. We're gonna pull it. There we go. And we have actually cold knifed this, sorry, cold knifed this windshield out. I was putting my body weight by pushing it there a little bit, guys. We're gonna set this right here. That's how you cold knife a windshield out, guys. Again, it's all about the leverage, all about how sharp your tool is. Keep your tools very sharp and be very cautious on customers' vehicles. Again, this is why I'm doing it on my personal vehicle, um, just because I did not want anyone in the comments or any of the viewers speculating something weird here but we have successfully cut out this windshield with a cold knife we were very careful with it if by chance we did nick little portions here and there like right here if you guys can see you just want to prime that up maybe even sand it down a little bit and then prime it back up it'll be fine there i'm trying to make sure i didn't miss anything else with you guys 
Um, a little quick little trick with this tool, and another reason why I think it actually has a lot more potential than what my uh, some of my technicians don't like this tool. I bought them this, these tools so they could have one, but they don't like it. Another little cool thing is when you're using this tool is you have this blade in there, and you can run this blade. You'll have two blades already ready to go. I saw my mentor do this and he actually uses two different cold knives while he does this, but I thought it'd be a lot easier with blades. So what you do is you're gonna, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put one in there, kinda just walk around that, push it there, go up through there, finish it off with the longer one, and you just kinda follow them throughout there. A little trick there, especially cause it's quick and easy, you can just jump around. Um, probably a little bit easier if you have two different cold knives. Um, Again, this one does have a little bit more height difference. You can be a lot more flexible with the height just because you don't have to worry about those three sizes there on the ball, on the ball bearings where they lock in there. So you do have more options of where you can lock it in. For example, I can probably, yeah, I can lock it right there or I don't have to actually be on these circles. So it's a, this is overall, it's good to have both of these guys to be honest with you. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have, if, if a really tight vehicle is, um, if a, if a windshield's really tight and I can't cold knife it, I'll sometimes have my assistant, he'll pull the cable down and then I'll angle back while he pulls it and we get a lot easier cut. So we get a lot easier with, with two people, it makes the cold knife so much more easier. Um, but most of the time, you, you shouldn't be using two people unless that unless that vehicle is just a very tight urethane. It was just decked really tight and isn't giving you the leverage, isn't giving you the leverage or height you need to actually do the right proper cut. Um, you'll be able to tell. Another uh, last thing before I let you guys go. Now, the thing is there's so many different tools out there that are being used now or are out there to cut windshields. You have the cold knife method and you also have the string method where we, you got, where, where we all know we use a piece of string to cut from the inside and then we just reel it in. Once you start a method, uh, once you start the cold knife method, you cannot switch to the string method most of the time. And the reason is why is because the string, of course, it's string guys, at the end of the day, this glass has already been, uh, has been sharpened uh, in the bottom corner. It no longer is grinded like they do after they make it because they sand it down, they sand down the corners to make it smooth so we don't get cut, auto glass people or and technicians. So since we cold knifed it, we actually sharpened it and we got glass shrapnel in here. This glass shrapnel can and will cut that glass easy since we're applying pressure and we'll de-thread it and it'll just rip on us. So once you start a method, you wanna typically stick with it. So if you start cold knifing and you wanna switch back to the wire because you're having too much trouble, you might not be able to in that certain area. You'll have to just continue it from somewhere else and then end it in that area. Uh, little tricks there, guys. Um, what I found out the hard, uh, the hard way that once you start cold knifing, you really don't want to um, switch methods, especially more than halfway in between. If you barely started at about three inches and you realize, nope, then yeah, I, you could possibly go back to the string method and just cut the whole string out, uh, cut the whole windshield out with the string. But other than that, guys, I hope this windshield does help some of you guys with um, with uh, cold knifing. Again, it's a it's a tool that must be respected on a customer's vehicle. Do not play around with this tool. Watch what you're doing. Don't just pull um, without looking at all times what you're pulling. Make sure you have your safety glasses on. If that and, and if that's the case, worry about your eyes. Um, if you have to use tape to protect it, to add a little bit of tape protection, go ahead. But uh, I'll tell you the truth that this metal will eat that tape in a second and it'll, go, and it'll just dig through the uh, next layer. The tape won't really uh, help that much when it comes to um, preventing a lot of uh, paint and body damage. So you need to um, be very careful. If anything, maybe more toward the lower down here, depending. You might have to put at least four layers of tape to at least go, get a good little block. But even then, again, this, these knives are sharp and you're pulling at a good little portion there guys so other than that hopefully this video helped you guys with uh, cold knifing any questions you guys have uh, feel free to leave them in the comments uh, i'll show you guys maybe another video another uh, quick little video of how to cold knife maybe like a little quick uh, reel whatever you call it on youtube uh on youtube short uh, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up and subscribe and again make sure you guys are joining our discord community uh, let's get that going and um, i'll see you guys in the next video thank you and have a good day